thanks Realist, for sending me this video i really appreciate you sending me this video so the first video we're gonna watch today it's called five reasons why you shouldn't mess with the united states as we discussed i was in the air force some of you are in the army right now or were in the army so thank you for your service amazing veterans we appreciate you let's go the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s left the United States as the sole superpower in the world, and it's never looked back. In all aspects of the world, the United States is indeed a superpower, especially when it comes to its military might, which is unsurpassable in its strength, technological superiority, operational capabilities, and power projection across the globe. America! In this video, we'll take a look at the five top <laughs> I just want to scream America this whole freaking video. The US military establishment. The United States Air Force is the strongest in the world. Oh Not man. Only in the number Of course. Of course the number 1 is the Air Force. Of course. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I think all the people in the Air Force get get to bow down for being credited for the, you know being the most important thing. You know, top five, <laughs> not even top five, number one, baby. Number of operational aircraft, but also in technological superiority. The country currently operates a total of over 15,000 military aircraft, combining all the branches of the military service, including the US Navy, US yeah. Army, Coast Guard, and the US Marines. As of 2017, the U.S. Air Force alone has a fleet of over 5,300 aircraft, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 170 military satellites. All right. Okay. This is not nothing, okay? 5,300 aircraft. And it's not just 5,300 aircraft that, like, Russia has 53. Not 53. Like, whatever number of aircraft Russia has, I'm guessing it's way smaller. Uh, maybe uh, two of them works. <laughs> two of them work out of all of them. But in 2% maybe. I go with not two of them. Okay. 406 ICBMs. Intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Holy crap. There is 20. How many? Let's say it's 50 states. 400 divided by 50. There's 8 in every state. How many 70 military satellites? I know we only need 36 for GPS. What the hell are the other ones doing? Oh my God. George June, so thank you so much for the super chat. Keep up the good work, Hike. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being so awesome. I really appreciate your super chat, buddy. Oh my God. Greater than any other country in the world. The USA has the largest number of stealth aircraft designed to be silent killers and untrackable by the radar defense systems of most countries in the world. Some of these stealth aircraft include air superiority fighters such as the F-22 Raptor oh. and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. If I had one dream, one wish, one anything, I want to fly in a stealth fighter. If I have a choice, the F-22 Raptor. That will never happen because the F-22 Raptor does not have a second seat. And I will never qualify as a pilot. That said, same thing with the F-35. I think my best choice would be something like the F-16. If I could fly in the F-16 in a, in a, in a oh, dream come true, lifetime goal achieved. Uh, I've been in all kinds of cargo planes I've, in the military. I've been in all kinds of helicopters. I've, uh, a lot. I've eaten lunch underneath the F-22 in a secured area, underneath the wing of the F-22. It was a wonderful experience. But, yeah, it's amazing. I would love to fly on it. Heavy bombers, such as the B-2... I've been in... I've been um, underneath a B-2 bomber. I have not gone in. But my original career field was supposed to be uh, uh, bomber navigation. That was supposed to be my original career field. Yeah. Spirit. In fact, the United States pioneered this technology in the 1980s with the introduction of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth attack aircraft. Stealth aircraft are designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce radar reflection from ground, sea, or air-based radar antennas, thereby reducing its radar cross-section, or RCS. This revolutionary technology allows a fifth-generation aircraft such as the F-22 Raptor with a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds to have a radar cross-section of just 0 0.0001 meters squared, about the size of a bumblebee. Oh my god! Imagine an enemy country. Okay, 
not knowing what's happening. First of all, uh, I think stealth fighters, there's a misconception. Stealth fighters are detectable by enemy radar, but it's those uh, radars are low frequency radars and they're not very accurate and they not, cannot lock on uh, uh, a guided missile. So they're not an attack radar. But stealth fighters can be detected by low, uh, low uh, power, not low power, but low uh, waveform radar. Uh, all the rockets and stuff like that, guided missiles and everything else, all the weapons are usually um, uh, high-frequency radar, and those cannot detect a stealth air aircraft, number one. But the bombers are not detectable with either radar system. High-frequency uh, high or low-frequency, bombers are not detectable no matter what. So if you detect a bumblebee on your radar, miles away are you is it even gonna get noticed no and if it does we can detect you further on than you can detect us come out after our, our f-22s or f-35s you'll get shot down before you get close before you even see them in the air oh my god i'm enjoying this what's more insane is that the massive b2 bomber also has the same radar cross section as the f-22 raptor it's than my thus pick. it becomes extremely difficult to track stealth aircraft even if the enemy spots them on their radar scopes, it's a whole other story to successfully track them and register a missile kill. The whole idea behind this technology is to break the chain in which a conventional surface-to-air missile defense system works. It's almost impossible. It's the same reason countries like China and Russia are also hard at developing their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20 and the Sukhoi Su-57, respectively. These aircraft will allow the U.S. Air Force to assert its air superiority over any battlefield of the future. And we all know that control of these skies is the biggest decider in any war. The next. So real quick, the reason that the technology they're developing, their stealth technology, was actually stolen from the United States in the espionage scandal. So all the st stealth technology that uh, China is developing and Russia is developing is from the B2, no, B F7, F117, uh, and it's 30 or 40 years old, and that's what they're developing their new technologies from. We are 40 years ahead of them, and <laughs> in development on top of what they have already. So they're not going to win this. I love it. I love it. Okay, number two. I like this video. I like it, this video. Thanks, Realist, for sending it. Shh, don't say anything, Realist. Thank you. The reason why any country going to war with the U.S. military should think twice is because of the strength of the U.S. Navy and its dominance over the world's ocean, especially the Navy's supercarriers. The U.S. Navy currently operates 11 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class supercarriers, which is the largest aircraft carrier fleet Navy. in the world. The only Navy that can come close in terms of technological advancement is probably the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, but they only have two operational carriers. We have 11! And the closest country to that is, uh, to, uh, is UK with two. Russia has one, but that one can't even float on its own power. <laughs> it's been using its generators all its life because it hasn't... Anyway, it's just terrible. It can't even drive anywhere, right? Anywhere. And technically, it's not even a carrier. And then the next closest is China. And uh, yeah... He's, they've got one. We have 11. And according to the Navy, you're supposed to always have one in rotation, one in reserve. Oh, sorry, one third in rotation, one third in reserve, and one third in repairs. So at most times, we're using three carriers at the minimum. I love it. The Nimitz class of carriers has a displacement of over 100,000 tons and can carry oh. a complement of up to 70 aircraft. They're literally a floating small town in the ocean. With you know when they said 5,300 aircraft in the Air Force? They weren't counting the Navy, were they? <laughs> so we probably have, and then all the secret aircraft, we probably have like 8,000 aircrafts in reality. Its own airport. The Nimitz-class carriers in themselves are extremely potent offensive weapons, but the way they operate in what is called the carrier strike groups makes these ships even more deadly. A carrier seldom Can't deploys alone. There are always a fleet of surface and underwater assets surrounding them and forming a strike group. These include guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines, and other support vessels. 
Okay, all right. Holy crap. Oh my god, I can't even comprehend this, guys. <laughs> There's so many vehicles. Oh my god. And they're not even afraid of the rocks. They're just going to go straight through the rocks. Holy crap. The two destroyers is my favorite part. The two I'm going to rewind a little bit because I want to I want to catch up. This is crazy. And forming a strike group. These include guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines, and other support vessels. They said a squadron, not even two. Of the a two is not squadron. At the center of the group forward. Oh my god! <laughs> Power! <laughs> when you see this, guys, uh, I don't know. Um, I've been an immigrant, so I've had that perspective since when I was 15 years old. And I have the perspective from being in the United States and being a U.S. citizen. I got to be honest. This makes me feel good. I mean, I wish we didn't have to have this. I wish we used most of that money for healthcare, education, uh, for social programs. Uh, I don't know. You know, imagine with all that money, you most of us wouldn't ever have to work. <laughs> Everyone can have a minimum salary or whatever. I don't know. But there's so many better ways we could use all this money if we didn't need to. But... Since we need to, I'm glad we have it. Holy crap, look at that. Yeah. Just, you'll never see that. By the time you try to get to that to do any damage, <laughs> you'll be dead. <laughs> Towards the enemy. While the carrier is carrying out its offensive role with the use of its air wing, the other ships are responsible to protect its flanks against any enemy attack. This combination of offensive and defensive strategy makes the US carrier strike group almost impenetrable. Good point, the United Jackie. States Navy maintains nine such carrier strike groups, eight of which are based in the United States and one that's forward deployed to Japan. Wow. Okay, remember how we said we have 11 carriers and I was like the one-third rule? Bullshit, no one-third rule. We are using nine of them at all times. And not only that, we have nine strike groups. Wow. I mean, you cannot be anywhere in the U.S. not to be in there. And you cannot be anywhere in the world. And get away from these guys. Holy crap. We have one backing up everyone in South Asia. We have <laughs> defensive positionings all over Northern America. And, and <laughs> on both sides of the United States. Oh my god. Man. Are you guys enjoying this? Because my mind is blown. I knew about this stuff. I knew it was crazy, but this is next level crazy. I love it. For over 50 years, this has been the principal element of US power protection, and the Nimitz class of supercarriers are at the center of it all. Despite this, the US is currently in the process of developing a new class of carriers called the Gerald R. Ford class, intended to replace the Nimitz class ships. This new supercarrier will be even more technologically advanced and I is can't expected imagine to continue it, US dominance of the oceans well into the late 21st century. Wow. The third reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is their massive stock. Wow. I can't even imagine what kind of an aircraft carrier and what technologies is going to have in 20, 50 years. In 50 years. Let's say 40 years. Because I might have a chance to see it. In the next 40 years, 40 years, we came from... 40 years ago, what were our... Oh, my God. 40 years ago is not that far anymore. It's, oh, my God. I was thinking it was the 1940s 40 years ago. It's, it's not... Oh, that's sad. I'm sad now. <laughs> but imagine what kind of technologies. Holy crap. ...pile of nuclear and conventional intercontinental ballistic missiles, or IV, ICBMs. ICBMs. Here we go. The ICBM plays the role of the land leg in the U.S. nuclear triad along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile, SLBM, and nuclear warheads carried on long-range strategic bombers. ICBMs are launched from ground-based missile what silos, in the 90s, achieving Jacob? high suborbital spaceflight, approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from the warhead, which re-enters the atmosphere and free-falls to the assigned target at hypersonic speeds. The U.S. military currently so, no. operates 400 ICBMs from its base in Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. 
The LGM 30G Minuteman 3 is the only type of ICBM that is currently operational in the US. The Minuteman 3 family of... Okay, we only have one type of ICBM. That means this thing is the shiznit. I don't usually talk like that. I'm just excited. 1993, okay. ICBMs were first developed in the 1960s as a response. James said, four years ago, we have F-14s. Now we have F-22s and F-35. I think the F-35 is the newest one. Honestly, in four years, I think we're going to have the UFOs that no one can recognize. I think, honestly, I, 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 I have a hard time believing that's not our technology. All the UFOs flying out there that no one knows what it is. Honestly, I think it's just a drone developed by United States, next level secret drone. Yep, I think that's what we're going to have. Hey, Coffee, how you doing? Haven't seen me stream in years. Not sure when you watched me the last time, but I ended up taking a break two years ago or so. And uh, this is my second week back. And we're doing gaming and React videos and a bunch of other stuff. So hang out, have fun. Glad you're back to check me out. B-21 Raider, beautiful. All right, let's go. To the Soviet nuclear threat. Throughout the Cold War and beyond, these missiles have undergone constant modernization. In the last decade alone, the US military has undertaken $7 billion worth of upgrades. The rocket propulsion engines, the propellants used, the guidance system, and even the flight control surfaces have all been refurbished. The upgraded missiles are completely different from its 1960s counterparts, except for the shell. These state-of-the-art improvements and modernization programs have kept the Minuteman 3 system operational for over 50 years with improved reliability that supports the missile's remarkable 99% alert rate. The latest versions of the missiles have a range of... That 99% alert rate. That, um, we had 12 aircrafts in our rescue squadron and our alert rate was we had to have uh, two aircrafts on permanent alert uh, we were acting as the Coast Guard for Japan and a uh, Southern Coast Guard. And then um, we had to have one spare. So that was three alerts out of 12. These guys are 99%. That means almost at no time these things are down. They're always ready to go. So don't mess with us. Holy crap. I love it. Over 8,000 miles. I can't imagine. Which is that. greater than the diameter of the Earth at 7,917.5 miles. They can carry multiple 330 kiloton nuclear warheads, which is 20 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not only that, each of these warheads can be assigned to different targets independently. The technology is called Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV, and was first developed for the Minuteman 3 family of missiles. So any country messing with the United States will have to deal with this awesome arsenal of firepower which can be launched at a moment's notice. If it weren't... Uh, the ICBMs are one of our spears of our trident. Uh, yeah. The ICBMs or the stealth fighters raining fire down on you. It would be precision-guided munitions, or better known as smart bombs or PGMs instead. This is another big reason why not messing with the US military is a good idea. Yeah. All branches of the US military I use smart many. bombs in some forms or the other. These weapon systems are designed to be precise and hit a specific target with maximum efficiency. These bombs are so effective that during the first Gulf War, PGMs comprised only 9% of weapons fired, but accounted for 75% of all successful hits. Since then, for the US military at least, the days of normal artillery shells and unguided bombs are long gone. Nowadays, the military uses PGMs from air, ground and sea. Precision guided munitions come in various forms and use different kinds of technologies to They're amazing. They usually use GPS or optical, but they're amazing. It's more expensive, of course, but you put the enemy um, at the further uh, the enemy can't attack you because you're at higher range that they can reach, but you protect your soldiers. So it's amazing. Achieve precise hits. A large majority of PGMs use the Global Positioning System, or GPS, of satellites to guide their trajectory to target. However, sometimes this becomes a problem, as GPS coverage is not always reliably available everywhere it's across jammable. the globe, or bad weather conditions can hinder operations. 
Thus, GPS the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, and the Army Research Laboratory have all coordinated to develop the first ever artillery-fired smart munition that will not use GPS guidance. The project artillery-fired smart munition. Ukraine would love to have this if we haven't already given it to them. Project is known as Moving Target Artillery Round, or MTAR for short. The MTAR shell can be guided onto stationary as well as moving targets in both land and sea using a comp moving targets is a very difficult thing to do accurately especially when you don't have well with gps that means it's doing optic it doesn't have gps combination of guidance technology the best part is that these shells can, can be, be fired, fired from the existing m777a2 155 millimeter towed awesome. howitzer and the M109A7 Paladin Integrated Management self-propelled 155 mm artillery systems already in use by the US military. The amount of dust. The shells will also feature an extended range of 40 to 60 miles using rocket boosters to propel them. Wow. Once finished, it will afford the US military another potent weapon. We're shooting we're not shooting bullets at you anymore. We're shooting rockets out of our guns. <laughs> What the hell is, have we came to? Forget shooting just random rounds of heavy rounds with TNT in it. Now we're shooting heavy rounds with TNT that have optical guidance systems with rockets behind them. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! How can anyone survive? Weapon system that outclasses others around the world. Lastly, the fifth and final reason why wow. you shouldn't fight the US military is drones oh yeah we're all familiar with what an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone is and what it's supposed to do but in recent years the usability of uavs are steadily increasing to encompass all spheres of military operations and the u.s military is the pioneering spirit behind it at first used only for surveillance missions drones were quickly weaponized after the 9 11 attacks and have been extensively used by the u.s military in the war against terror as an offensive weapon platform it's forecasted that over the next decades, the U.S. is in line to purchase over 1,000 combat drones. Of we saw how important drones are in Ukraine, and uh, it protects our soldiers or their soldiers. It, uh, the, intel uh, um, the intelligence it, it gives you is... I don't think there's a more important thing. Knowing where the enemy troops are exactly, you can drop artillery on them and take care of them and protect your own troops. So the intelligence it gives you is unmatched. And the U.S. drones usually have rockets and targeting. So um, General Electric drones are amazingly smart. And the pilots are the same level qualified pilots as the, as the guys who go in the fire jets. So um, the U.S. drones are next level. And I'm glad we're investing in them. Various classifications. Some of them, like the Lockheed Martin, I want to learn more about this Sentinel, one. Watch a and video the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray are already in the final stages of development, and once finished, will provide the U.S. military with state-of-the-art platforms capable of multi-role operations, ranging I from attack missions to aerial refueling. I don't know much about that drone. Drone technology has reached I've such heights today that a single UAV can loiter miles above the surface of the Earth for hours, waiting for the target to show its head and sticking with impunity. This capability will allow all the services under the U.S. military to reduce its dependency on manned platforms, thereby reducing the risks during future combat operations. These five weapon systems make the U.S. military extremely dangerous for any adversary looking to get into a conflict with them. In a conventional warfare setting, do, it's almost honestly. impossible to beat the U.S. Usually military machine. That That's why happens. modern enemies of the United States are employing more and more asymmetric warfare strategies against them. Oh my freaking god, one, two, three, holy crap, there's three carriers in the front. Mighty U.S. military. Despite that, the U.S. military juggernaut is hands down the most powerful military complex in the world today, and probably will be for decades to come. That's all we have for you today, folks. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Oh my God, that was amazing. I learned so much. Give a shout out to Destiny. Links in the description. Go give him a subscribe. Um, yeah, don't mess with the US. I feel like we learned a lesson. I want to watch some more of their stuff. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, there was so much. I loved every minute of it. It was crazy.
Real Estate goes, goes crazy. JCAP goes 1,000 drones. Uh, I think 1,000 drones is a good start. It's a good start. I think we need more. We're shooting magical bullets at you pretty much. That can target you anywhere. We can see everywhere you, you go with our drones. Um, we can come uh, to your home nation, destroy everything with our bombers and stealth fighters, and you won't know what happened until it's too late. Um, we don't even have to come close to you. We can shoot you with ICBMs. It's nice. To, uh, we're not. United States kind of became a peacekeeper. At least that's what we like to think.